Okay, brother said that uh, we follow the hadith. Now suppose some hadith we are doubtful about. Then what do we do? We leave that hadith which is doubtful. What is doubtful we leave? No. We follow the hadith, whatever is graded to be sahih, authentic. And you know very easily we say sahih, but if you look at the filtration process before hadith is considered to be sahih, is very, very rigorous. It's gone to, through very severe testing to be before being reaching the state of sahih hadith. If you look at the five conditions for a hadith to be considered sahih. Now here comes a man who says, I don't understand this hadith. I won't accept it. So it's the statement of the Prophet ﷺ with authentic chain of narration. How can we say that I don't accept it? You can say that I'll ask a scholar. Huh? I don't know, I will ask a scholar. But don't come down to leaving it. Because if we do start doing that, then we are giving more importance to our own akal. And our akal can be right, it can be wrong. There are at times commentary to that hadith, explanation to that hadith, which we have to do. So we can take an opinion of a scholar. But we can't do our own ishtihad. Because the Prophet ﷺ said there are three types of judges. Sunnah Abu Dawud hadith. Two will go to Jahannam and one will go to Jannah. One is that judge who judges unjustly. <coughs> he will go to Jahannam. Second is that judge who judges without complete knowledge. He judges without complete knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ said he will also go to Jahannam. And the judge who judges with knowledge and justly, he will go to Jannah. So now we find that many people when they have half-baked knowledge and then they say, I am not accepting this. So then that is a kind of a judgment which we should not do. We should refer to scholars and that's the best thing, safest way. Brothers asking a question that in matters of ijtihad, uh, if there is a way following opinion and what if it is wrong? Hmm? And if both are correct, see, as long as you are following something which is given from a scholar, with all, with with hope that this is correct opinion, inshallah. Uh, we, we we hope from Allah Taala that that will not be wasted. Huh? Whatever we do, we, because we didn't know. There's a difference between these two people, and there are plenty of evidences about this from the Quran and the Sunnah. Now, regarding the opinion, both are correct. See, we have to distinguish between two things. I'll just be very clear. We find two extremes. Huh? On one extreme, we find people who say that. 2 plus 2, 4 is also correct, 2 plus 2, 5 is also correct, 2 plus 2, 6 is also correct, 7, 8, 9, 10, everything is correct. Because there is ikhtilaf. On the other uh, side, we find harsh people who say, whoever doesn't follow my opinion, now nah, he all go to go to Jahannam. In matters of fiqh ikhtilaf, in matters of fiqh ikhtilaf, where there is uh, there's a possibility that he's got one reward, inshallah. In matters of fiqh, huh, we find if someone came to this other conclusion, so these people are very harsh. They say, I am following this opinion, everyone else is going to go to Jahannam. This is very harsh and it's not correct. So what is the right way? The right way is in between. What is the right way? Let us talk about evidences with each other, with open mind, without feeling personal about it or hurt about it. Huh? Second thing, let us also have tolerance to each other. So for example, I hold the opinion that this, this is the right thing. In fiqh issues, not in matters of aqidah. In fiqh issues, I hold the opinion, this is the right issue. And he is saying, this is right. Now what? I will say, I will say that I follow this, but if he follows this also, in trying to follow Quran and Sunnah, in trying to find the Sunnah of the Prophet so I am tolerant to him. I should be tolerant to him, I should bear him. He is my brother, huh? in spite of following a different fiqh issue. But on the other hand, this doesn't mean we, stone, we consider 2 plus 2, 4, 5, 6, everything is correct. I'll give you an example. You are in the state of Udu and if, you, if blood comes out and blood pours from your body, huh? any if blood has to pour, according to the Hanafi school of thought, your Wudu is broken. According to the Shafi school of thought, it's not broken. Now what? Should we tell the non-Muslim that in our religion, it's broken and not broken? Wudu is valid and not valid, both. Similarly, you're in the state of wuzu, and if a non-mehram woman happens to touch you, in the according to the Shafi school of thought, your wuzu is invalid now. It's gone. According to the Hanafi school of thought, it's not invalid. Now, should we say it's valid and invalid both? Contradictions like hundreds. And you will find like Bidayat al-Mujtahid, if you refer, by Ibn Rushd. He has compiled these ikhtilaf. And they estimated 15,000 issues in which they are ikhtilaf. Uh, among these major two school of thought, Hanafi and Shafi, and between uh, Hanafi and Maliki, there are around 18,000 ikhtilaf. 
Now everything we will say, this is also correct, that is also correct. This is a religion of full contradictions then. But this is not true. The right thing is, there is a difference between tolerance. He holds the opinion that my wuzu is invalid, I am going to do wuzu, no problem, let him do it. Because he is also trying to follow the scholar and so he is also trying to follow some sunnah of the Prophet And you hold this opinion, you hold this opinion. And if you see the evidences, we have this since I have raised the issue. We find that so many sahaba who prayed salah huh, while blood flowing from their body. And the Prophet came to know and he did not tell their wuzu was, valid, was invalid. So in this we find Imam Shafi has a point. Huh? But on the other hand, in touching a woman, we find the Prophet actually kissed his wife and went for salah at Hadith of Abu Dawud. And he did not repeat his wuzu. So in this we find the Hanafi school of thought has a point. So what we should do is have tolerance and study. People get charged up. This charged up is very bad for us. Getting charged up is what is creating big time problems. So both extremes we should not go to. The right way is this middle way. We should not have harshness and intolerance to each other. We should also not come down to a solution that everything is correct. Because then what happens we lose the beautiful beauty of the teachings of Islam.